Hey guys, and welcome to another Q&A. Teddy, stop struggling. Um, there's actually going to be two videos for this Q&A. Um, shit, fucker. I think I forgot to see how many subscribers there are. 120,000 plus plus subscribers. Woo! Thank you guys. This is the video for the hair and beauty and life and pets and vegan food and general travel questions. If you guys want to watch the video that had all the tattoo and art and music and band and writing and novel questions, link below. So I did get all my questions from Facebook and Instagram, link below to those if you don't already follow me. Um, I did delete any doubles, I did delete any questions that would be answered by previous questions, and I also deleted any stupid questions that could easily be answered by Google in one second. Um, any comments as well, like people just saying congratulations and I think you're awesome. Thank you, I did see those, they did make me smile. Um, but I'm not including them in this actual video just to try and save some time, but this video is still probably going to be ridiculously long. Okay, hair and beauty stuff. Mimi says, what will your next hair color be and when? Um, I'm probably just gonna put ultraviolet on top of the blue I have, just for a little bit of a purple tint. Although it's probably just going to end up like black. I don't know. Maybe I'll try and strip the color a bit. I don't know if I can be fucked. When? Whenever I can be fucked. Sometime before Christmas, probably. Jennifer says, would you like to cut your hair short soon? My hair is down to my butt and yeah, I think I get a slight headache from it now. I do kind of get headaches. <clears throat> I can't really put my hair in ponytails or buns. Um, I get headaches. I pretty much have to braid my hair if I want my hair to be out of my face. It can pretty much only be in a braid. I washed my hair the other day and it was actually shocking how heavy my hair was. Um, but yeah, I still want my hair to be longer, so I'll just deal. Tiny says, will you be making any more makeup tutorials? I enjoy them and would like to see more if you're willing. Probably not, considering I don't wear makeup anymore. I mean, I might, again, in the future, but... Yeah, I haven't worn any for like four months. Although I did wear some yesterday for Halloween. Technically today is Halloween, but today's Monday and it's my day off and I ain't doing shit. Today's Christmas. I decorated my Christmas tree today. Today's officially November 1st for me. Um, but yeah, I wore makeup yesterday, although it wasn't makeup, it was just black from like here to, it was war paint. Um, I'm probably gonna upload that video. Mirabelle says, what kind of modeling would you do right now? Nude! I don't know. Modeling that doesn't involve me wearing makeup? <laughs> um, I will be taking some shots for Stretch of Body Jewelry. They sent me some plugs. I've been waiting for good weather to take those photos. It's just been raining every single day. Um, yeah. I don't know. Anything I would actually support, I would model for. But I don't really care about modeling that much. I prefer being behind the camera. Hi, baby. Got him. Catelyn says, when you last bleached your hair and a lot broke off, what did you do to help it be healthy again? Your hair is so incredibly beautiful. Thank you. Um, I did absolutely nothing. I did nothing. I just let my hair grow. Um, I wash my hair like once a month pretty much. I use dry shampoo on the roots if my hair gets a bit greasy, but that is it. Um, I don't have a hair care routine. I don't put any product on it apart from shampoo and conditioner once a month. Um, after I wash my hair, I might put a little bit of coconut oil on the tips, but apart from that, once a month, nothing. I feel like a lot of people who want nice hair end up putting so much product on it they don't realize they're actually fucking up their hair. Just, if you want your hair to look nice, do nothing to it. Let your hair take care of itself. Embrace what your hair naturally does. I mean, all this shampoo and stuff, we didn't have that back in the day. Like, what the fuck? They weren't shampooing and conditioning in the medieval ages and they had long, beautiful hair back then, according to paintings and sculptures and stuff. Um, it's all a money-making ploy. Don't listen to it. If I could wash my hair with only water, that's actually my next step that I'm aiming for, slowly weaning off shampoo and conditioner and any products. That's what I'm doing at the moment. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I use shampoo just because by the time I wash my hair, I have a little bit of a buildup of dry shampoo on my roots. So I do like to get all of that out. Um, but yeah. Hi. So yeah, my hair routine is nothing. Arlene says, why did you stop wearing makeup? I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it feels. I mean, I'm wearing glasses right now, so you can't really tell, and it's kind of far away. I don't like having these glasses off. I got a new prescription, and now the world is, like, fucked up when I take them off. Woo! Lettering says, do you like nail polish? No, wait, that's probably an I. Eatering? I think so. Eatering says, do you like nail polish? Not really. I'm very OCD, so if I put on nail polish and then one of the nail chips slightly, I have to completely take it off and put it back on again. Um, and that's maddening. I also only really like having nail polish on my nails if they're longer, because I am OCD about hands. Um, but my nails are rarely longer because I cut them so I can play guitar properly. So I haven't worn nail polish in a long fucking time. Toxicity Eclipse says, will you ever fully bleach your hair again and start doing brightly colored tutorials again? I highly doubt it. At the moment, I'm gonna say no. Who knows, maybe, but probably not. Andrea Bertel says, are you doing your tradition of Christmas red hair again? Nope. Teddy, shut your mouth. Callate. Olivia.cs says, what was your favorite hair color you've done so far? Probably this one. Considering I've had the same hair for a very long time, like almost a year, and I haven't wanted to change it, that's probably saying I'm the happiest with this. Every other hairstyle I've done, I've thought about what I'm going to do next, but I'm satisfied. So I guess just my natural hair turning into blue. But I'm probably going to go slightly purple. I like ultraviolet because last time I used it, which was years ago back in Singapore, it was a bluey purple. And I remember I was wearing like red earrings and stuff, and the combination reminded me of Christmas, which is why I want to do it again. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Jackson Mackle says, would you ever consider doing silver hair? I have considered it, just blending my color into like white or silver on the end. Who knows? Odilia Swan says, ever gonna have galaxy hair soon? If I do ultraviolet, it's probably gonna look galaxy-ish. Yinamari13 says, do you do anything to, ke to keep your face clear or use anything to wash your face? What would you recommend? Water! That's all I use. And I'm vegan. Sam.Williams.5076 says, How do you deal with dryness slash split ends from bleaching if you don't ever cut your hair? Okay, here's the thing about split ends. A lot of people believe that you have to cut the split ends off, otherwise the split will go all the way up your hair to the root, and that is bullshit. I don't know, maybe it happens on other people's hair, but on mine? I have tested it multiple times. Anytime I actually see a split end, I will take the ends and split them. And let me tell you what happens. A little piece comes off and that's it. The split does not travel all the way down the hair. Like, you don't have to cut them off. Literally, if you want long, healthy hair, do nothing. Don't cut it. Don't wash it. Don't put stuff in it. Wash it like once a month, because the more you wash your hair, you're stripping your hair of its natural oils. And that's why it gets greasier faster, because your body's like, oh shit, there's nothing there, my scalp is bare. So then you end up creating more of this stuff, because your body needs it there in order for it to be healthy. And then because it comes out faster, you're like, oh shit, now my hair is greasy, and then you wash it again, and then your body's like, oh shit, and then it releases all the stuff again. That's why you have to slowly wean off washing your hair. I used to wash my hair every other day. Um, and now I've weaned off washing my hair to the point where I do it once a month. And my hair is the healthiest it has ever been. I have been getting more compliments. People always ask me what I do, but they never want to know the answer. 
they just want to go out and buy a product and smack it in their hair and I tell them, hey, don't buy products, don't wash your hair, don't brush your hair. If you have wavy or curly hair, don't brush your hair because then you're going to end up with the Hermione bush. Um, I just kind of brush out my knots with my fingers. But yeah, people always ask me what I do with my hair and then they don't actually like the answer, but that is my answer. What was the question? Oh yeah, how do you deal with dryness? Coconut oil, if you need a little bit of coconut oil. Split ends, fuck them. Just, if you want long hair, don't cut your hair. Okay, vegan stuffs slash food stuffs. Kelly says, have you ever tried DIY vegan cosmetics slash beauty products? As in make it myself? No. Apart from like coconut oil, but I'm not making that myself. Um, Desiree says, when did you become vegan? I became officially 100% vegan February of last year. So it's been almost, almost two years? Yeah, almost two years. Pretty much two years. Almost two years. I don't fucking know. Don't make me do math. Justine says, have you tried any vegan Lush products? I'm in love with their hair care. I bought their dry shampoo, didn't like it. Um, I bought one of their deodorants and that worked really well until a couple of weeks ago it started to kind of fuck up my armpit skin. My armpit skin started like turning red and getting really dry and flaky and then I got like a lump and then now the area where that lump was is like scarred tissue. Um, my friend Melina also got a rash from the same deodorant so... Alyssa says, do you still make some of your older vegan recipes, such as the cinnamon rolls, bucket of health, or dark chocolate brownies? Um, cinnamon rolls I make from time to time, they just take a bit of effort, although I think I'm going to be making them soon. Because it's winter, and that's like cinnamon roll season. Bucket of health, I want to make that. I haven't made it in a long time, I really should. Um, do you have, I haven't made the brownies in a while. I should. Do you have any tips on being vegan while your family and friends aren't? Fuck them. Get new family and friends. No, I'm kidding. Just do what you do. Um, I just don't push my veganism on them. I went vegan completely on my own without knowing any vegans, without having anyone trying to convince me to go vegan. I feel like if somebody had been pushing it on me, I wouldn't have done it. Because people are fucked up. <laughs> um, I was that meat-eating asshole who was like, fuck vegan food. I remember when I was like 12 or 13, I was, at, I was visiting my friend who I hadn't seen in years. And I was staying at her place and she was like, oh, do you want some chocolate cake? And I was like, fuck yeah. She was like, my friend made it. It's vegan. And I was like, ew, and didn't even try it. Um, so I've been there. I was that meat-eating asshole. And now I'm... <laughs> that vegan asshole. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't force my veganism on others because I feel like that's not going to do anything. I mean, I post videos about animal cruelty and the, you know, health problems with meat um, and the health benefits of veganism, but it, like, I'm not, you know, going up to people and being, hey, you, go vegan. Sometimes I want to, but I know it's not going to do anything, so I don't. Especially with friends and family, people that you want in your life, you don't really want to start shit. And if you aren't starting shit and they start starting shit, then that's on them. And you can fully be like, well, you're being an asshole because I didn't say anything. A lot of people make jokes that like vegans will just constantly tell people that they're vegan. Based off my experience, it's not me who tells people I'm vegan, it's everyone else who tells everyone else that I'm vegan. I'll be sitting there eating my food silently and someone else will bring up that I'm eating vegan food. And I'm like... Tips? If they're giving you shit, just ignore it. Um, make your own food, do your own thing. Whatever. If your family is being cool with it and they're not saying anything, then I recommend just making delicious vegan food and feeding them and helping them realize that vegan food is actually fucking delicious. Um, I know people that have actually gained weight after going vegan because food tastes so much better now. 
Um, I have a tattoo client. When I started tattooing him, he was vegan, and he was pretty buff at, uh, back then. And he is no longer vegan, and he's kind of skinny now. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like if people are giving you shit, just ignore them. They're giving you shit because they're angry at themselves. And if they're not giving you shit, that's great. Just make food and be merry. Or Pippin. Christina says, what was and is the hardest thing you've had to overcome and let go of by becoming vegan? Um, originally I thought it was ice cream until I discovered so delicious cashew milk ice cream. I have the vanilla, the salted caramel cashew, and the dark chocolate truffle in my freezer as we speak. I think I have two tubs of each. Like, I always have a full tub and then I have the tub I'm currently eating. <laughs> um, I like to cut up my own chocolate and put that in the vanilla one and just kind of eat it. Um, because it's like the perfect level. I find the salted caramel is absolutely amazing, but it can get a bit too sweet. But that's just because I have fucked up blood sugars, and if I eat things that are too sweet, it, it fucks me up. <laughs> so originally, the hardest thing was lack of ice cream until I discovered, hey, we have ice cream and it's fucking good. Anytime I have any friends over, I make them try it, and they're like, this is amazing. Other than that, I don't know, I guess finding food to eat? I live in Vancouver, so it's pretty easy. I have a lot of options. And I don't know, I don't want to eat meat, so it's not hard for me to not eat meat. Um, I guess people being assholes is always kind of hard. Um, I do work with a couple of people who will bring up the fact that my food looks gross purely because there isn't meat on it, even if I don't say anything to them, but I just ignore them because I'm not actually friends with those people. Um, quite a few of the people, the other people I work with are vegetarian or do pack vegan lunches often. One of my coworkers is not vegan, but a lot of the time he will make vegan food. Um, so yeah, it's only the people I don't actually like that give me shit, so I don't particularly give a fuck, because I don't like them. Trin says, if you could only eat three meals for the rest of your life, what would they be? Oh god, kill me now. I love food too much, I like variety too much. Don't make me choose just three. I would go nuts. That'd be gross. I'd get sick of it. <sighs> Arlene J. Flores says, Out of all your recipes, which ones do you make the most? The Asian noodles and veggies, like the tofu and the bok choy and the udon noodles with soy sauce and garlic. I make that quite a bit. Um, I have pizza quite a bit, but I don't make it the way I did in the video. In the video, I think I just, I made it myself on like naan bread. Now, because of my grocery store, they have quite a few vegan things. Um, I buy the Daya ready-made pizza. I get the cheese lovers. I put that in the oven for about 15 minutes and then I take it out and I add mushrooms and spinach and arugula because I fucking love arugula and slices of tomato and then I put that back in for like another 10-15 minutes and then I eat that. So I have that quite a bit um, but I haven't made a video on that. Uh, what are the recipes? Pancakes. The blueberry pancakes I make a lot but usually without the blueberries because they're not in season at the moment. Apple crumble, I was making that a shit ton before I actually made the video. Now I'm sick of it because I ate it so much. Oh, and that like garlic, butter, broccoli, pasta. I make that quite a bit. Jesus, how do I say this? Chillingers says, what was the definite thing that made you become vegan? Um, we know you've always loved animals, but what was the bit of information that turned you around to truly commit to it? I've always loved animals, and I've always felt guilty for eating animals. Anytime I would see, you know, an animal cruelty video or a video about, like, what happens in factories, I would just, like, have a mental breakdown and scroll away as fast as I could. Um, 
I went vegetarian in high school and then I like gave up after a couple months. And I don't know, I, it just never really occurred to me to do it. And then one day I was at the gym, I was using the bike thing, watching the TV, and I was watching something, there was like a rock music festival or something, I forgot who it was, but one of the musicians was vegan, and he was doing an interview and somebody was just talking to him about veganism, and it wasn't even him talking about why he was vegan, it was just hearing about veganism again after all this time of like not even thinking about it, and in that moment I went, I'm going vegan. And I did. I didn't go tur uh, cold turkey that day, but that was when I started. I'm pretty sure like that day I stopped eating all red meat. First I went pescatarian, and then I went vegetarian, and then I went vegan. But it was over a couple of months. I think from meat eater to vegan was maybe like six months or something. Yeah, my battery's flashing at me. Okay, travel questions. Ariane, 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 I don't know, says, what is the thing you love most about Canadians? Well, I can only speak for Vancouverites, but mostly they're all just like, they're so chill. Compared to everywhere I've lived, Canada's just so fucking chill. Okay, Vancouver, I haven't been to any other part of Canada yet. Um, but yeah, like, living in Sydney, no offense, to people that might be from Sydney, but everyone I had to deal with in Sydney, they were just so, like, uptight. Majority of the guys were assholes, and majority of the girls were bitches. No offense. Um, but, like, the energy and the air of Sydney, it was just, like, it gave me anxiety. And then I moved here, and it was just relaxed. I don't know if it's the people, that make it that way, or I don't know if it's like the country that make the people that way. I feel like it's the environment of having all the forests, having mountains, having the sea, and like it's just so relaxed, the air is so clean, and everyone's just so chill, and the majority of them are stone. Um, but yeah, that was one thing I noticed when I first moved here. I was like, the air is beautiful. Although now people have started vaping, and that's gross. I fucking hate vaping. I honestly feel like vape smoke smells worse than cigarette smoke, and people do it indoors. Like, what the fuck? It's like walking to a wall of maple syrup. It smells awful. It's so thick. It gives me a headache because it's so sweet. Ugh. I fucking hate that vape shit. Kaz says, what part of Canada would you move to or visit next? I have a character called Kaz. Um, I move to? No idea. Visit? Um, I really want to go to Banff, because I've heard that is, like, amazing. And apart from that, I just want to travel. I just want to see like all of BC and all of Canada. One thing I want to do, I want to get like a camper van and just travel. Although now with my band, if we ever get our shit together, maybe we can just tour around and I can guest spot and do tattoos around Canada. Justine says, where's the most beautiful place you've been in BC so far? Is there a place that makes you feel amazing? I love Vancouver. Uh, apart from Vancouver, I've only visited Whistler. Um, I think I've also been to... I've been through Chilliwack. And... In order to get to Cypress. Cypress Lake. No, Cultus! It's called Cultus Lake. So I've been like there, but I didn't look around there. I was there for Cultus Lake and then I left. Um, so I've pretty much only been to Vancouver and Whistler. Whistler is absolutely beautiful in the winter. It looks amazing. It's just like winter wonderland. But it is also party, stoner, drug wonderland. <laughs> um, a lot of Aussies go there for the cheap drugs. Um, I know a couple of, you know, Canadians that live there that actually cannot stand Australians because of the reputation they have built up in Whistler. But yeah, Whistler is essentially like party town. 
I never thought it was like that. For me, my image of Whistler was like Christmas Town because of all the pictures I've seen. And it is. It looks like Christmas Town and it essentially is Christmas Town. But you know, if you go to the bars at night, everything is just like parties. But I've mostly just heard about that because I tend to not go out anyway. So as long as you don't go out, you're not going to have to deal with people doing that stuff. That's the great thing about being a hermit. People don't bother you because you just don't put yourself in situations where you have to interact with people. Sarah says, have you ever lived or been to Russia? I have not. I want to. Rebecca says, do you plan on staying in Canada for a long time? Oh no! Oh no. I really like Vancouver, but you know, wherever the wind. Any where the wind takes me is where we're going. That will make sense if you watch the other video. Carly says, are you thrilled that you live in Canada and don't have to deal with the hideousness of the US election? Yep. Fuck that noise. Isabel says, would you ever visit New Zealand? I have been to New Zealand and I do want to go back. I want to go explore the wilderness and the wildlife and the glow worms and all that good fucking shit. Plus there's an artist there I would like to get tattooed by. Okay, now we are at the life slash general questions. Um, this person did not have a name. Any thoughts on body positivity? What do you mean? Any thoughts on people loving their bodies? It's great. What other thoughts are there? <laughs> Lexi says, if you could be at any place in life right now, where would you be? I'd say right exactly where I am because I am on the path to where I want to be and I don't want to skip anything, but I would like to be further along with the band. I hate waiting on people. <laughs> but, you know, it is, it's a process of, you know, figuring everything out and getting it all together and fucking gigs and recording and stuff. Because I'm not going to be recording at home anymore. We are going to be um, recording with other people and probably renting like studio space. So that takes time as well. So yeah, I'd be right here, but a little further along with that. Andy says, is there anything you think you made the wrong choice on? <sighs> no. Thoughts on Halloween? Yay, it's great, but I don't particularly give a fuck about it. I'm more of a Christmas person. For me, like, Halloween, whatever. It's fun to dress up, but whatever. Today is technically Halloween, but I'm not doing anything. I'm staying at home. I'm staying at home in my Christmas home. I decorated my Christmas tree today. That was my Halloween. Teddy, shut your mouth. You're so fluffy. You're so fluffy and tiny. You're not scaring anyone with that bark. Shush. Trina says, what has been the most impacting cause to your personal life that you have dedicated your time to? Um, e.g. Aboriginal rights, clean water, education, etc. Um, I don't know, I just want to make the world better. I want to make the entire world better. So I guess that's what I do with veganism as well as trying to spread awareness on how shitty cultural appropriation is and, you know, stop wearing cultures as costumes and hey, let's talk about how the, ab uh, how the Native Americans are having their clean water taken away from them and no one's fighting for that and you know it's the world fucking sucks i like to share a lot of videos to try and get that word out but i mean you go to my facebook page and i do share a lot of stuff it might be excessive but whatever and people will like a selfie they will comment and like a selfie but they will ignore or comment shitty things on other posts, whether it's about uh, veganism or racism or sexism. People have their priorities. Kaz says, are you divorced yet? Yes. We got divorced a while ago. I can't remember when, like a year? I don't know. I've been divorced for a while. Jennifer says, what is your go-to routine on a cold, windy day? If I don't have things to do, I would just eat and curl up and watch stuff. I have a TV now, so I wouldn't curl up in bed. I have a nice 60 inch TV and I set up my living room all nice and comfy, so 
I did actually, I came home from work the other day and I curled up with some garlic bread and soup and I just watched TV. And Teddy joined me because Teddy loves watching TV. Simaza says, if you could try and do something new you never did before, what would it be? Play live with a band! Let's go guys, let's do this. Rebecca says, how has your acting been going? Have you been able to get many parts? Um, my anxiety has pretty much prevented me from being able to audition. <laughs> I go to the auditions and then I end up shitting myself. Um, it sucks. I have like performance anxiety and I have like a phobia of being judged, which is unfortunate because essentially auditioning is being judged. The first thing I ever auditioned for was The Flash, and I got that. Um, and I, I wasn't nervous at all when I went for that audition. I was just excited because it was the first audition I had ever been to. I didn't know what to expect. I was there an hour early, so no one else that was auditioning for my role was there. So I didn't feel like that level of competition. Um, I went in, I yelled for a taxi. They asked me to do it again, facing the camera this time, because I didn't know what I was doing. So I did, and then I left, and then I got a call like a couple weeks later. They were like, hey, they want you for The Flash. And I was like, what? And I haven't gone anything since, because now I shit myself. Um, it sucks. Like, do any of you guys have this? I love performing. I love acting. I love being in front of the camera and behind the camera. Once I actually get the part and I'm on set, I'm fine, but it's the audition process that I just lose my shit. Um, I'll be okay. And then the longer it takes to get into the audition room, like, the more I get nervous. And then I get in there, and I might be okay when I start, but usually by the time I finish, I'm actually, like, shaking. And then I have to go to the bathroom and, like, calm my shit. So no, I have not done any acting. <laughs> Liana, Li Liana? I think it's Liana. Who is your biggest inspiration in life? Um, me? Is that cocky? <laughs> I don't know, there's people I like, there's celebrities I like, but I don't necessarily idolize anyone. I just, they're just people. I th that's, one thing about myself that I like, even as a child, I never saw other humans as out of reach. I never saw other humans as, like, something different. For me, you know, I would see actors and musicians on TV, and it was never, oh, I'm never gonna be like them. There was never that People have this idea that there's like normal people and then there's celebrities. I've never had that. For me as a kid, it was if they can do it, I can do it. And I still have that. So there's people I like. You know, sometimes I love watching, you know, compilation videos of like, you know, funny Chris Evans. I fucking love that shit. He's hilarious. I love his stuff. But I wouldn't say I idolize him. I don't know. I've recently started watching all the Sebastian Stan compilations because I've watched all the Chris Evans ones. <laughs> I love seeing funny people be funny and have a good time. And especially if I like their work. But I don't really idolize anyone. And I wouldn't say I watch these videos and then get inspired and go and do my thing. Like, I'm already doing my thing. I've been doing my thing since the day I was born. I've always just been driven. If there's one thing I am, it is driven. Melina says, how do you feel about shitting naked? Shitting naked is awful. Especially if you're already wet. Like if you got into the shower and you're like, God damn it, I have to take a shit. And then you get out and you take a shit. And you're just sitting there and it's cold and you can feel the water just like dripping down while you're trying to take a shit and you're like sliding all over the toilet seat. Or, ugh, I feel like the worst shitting experience I ever had it was back in Singapore, which is so hot and so humid. And I, I jogged every single morning. There was a period of my life in Singapore where I was just like super huge on like jogging and running. And then my tits grew massive and there's no way I'm gonna do that now. Um, but yeah, I came back from a jog and I was super fucking sweaty and I took all my clothes off and I was about to jump in the shower and I was like, oh, I have to use the toilet. So I sat in the toilet, turned out I had to take a shit. So I was sitting there sweating 
It was so hot, so fucking hot. I was still sweating. It was just like sweat coming from like my tits and my neck. And it was just like running down my back while I was trying to take a shit. And it was, it was awful. Shitting naked is awful. Don't shit naked. I feel like if you're dry, it's fine. But if you're wet, like, ugh. Flora says, what is your spirit animal? I have no idea. I feel like there might be a spirit animal for who I am now. And I feel like there also might be a spirit animal for who I would like to be, you know, minus the anxiety, minus all of the problems I have developed from having psychological abuse. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think I would be? Let me know. I'm interested. Comment below. What do you think my spirit animal would be and why? And what is yours? Carly says, you have come a long way in many areas of your life. How do you feel about that? Um, looking at who you were versus who you have become. Good? I, f I feel good? I've come very far, but I feel like I'm still gonna get further. I mean, I've matured a shit ton over the last couple of years, but I feel like I'm still gonna mature. I don't feel like I'm ever going to stop learning. I'm very happy with who I am. I wouldn't change who I am because I'm still growing. And I have a lot of problems, such as not being able to audition for things <laughs> because of my anxiety. But at least I know about it and I know why I shit myself and maybe I can work on that. I'll just snort a bunch of cocaine before I go in. Mirabelle says, could you possibly do a meet and greet at a restaurant or cafe or something? Much love. Um, I've thought about that, but then I kind of figured I'll just play a gig and y'all can turn up and then I'll hang out with you after. I feel like that would be more fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, did you just fart? Santi says, what have you created slash crafted lately? Pillows. I've made a shit ton of pillows. Pretty much all of the pillows you can see behind me. I made. There's more over here. I made this motherfucker. This motherfucker took forever. Um, I made all of these out of like old clothes and stuff I don't wear anymore. I cut out this snowflake from a shirt and then I sewed it onto this red fabric which was actually from an old pillowcase but it was a weird size so I cut everything out and did everything again. Sewing the snowflake onto here took forever. Cutting out the snowflake took forever. Where's another one? This bear paw. Same thing. Sewing the bear paw to the red fabric took forever. But I really like them. And then this one, this pudding pillow. Someone else has commented on how much they love this pudding pillow, but I fucking love this pudding pillow. And this was an accident. I had one pillow, like the actual cushion, left. Um, and then I had a white cushion cover that was a weird size. So I cut out this size of the cushion cover and I sewed it all together and I was like, okay, I have to put something in the front. I had some <clears throat> red fabric left over from these guys and so I started doodling and then I ended up making a, a pudding pillow and it's so cute. So I will be also posting a video on how I made all of these pillows. Like, look at this motherfucker. I made that motherfucker. I'm such a crappy bitch. Kanani says, what's your current obsession? Well, it was pillows. Now I'm very done with pillows. About two weeks of my life was taken up by pillows. Because I sew by hand, because machines scare the living shit out of me. Um, current obsession now? I don't have one right now. But I'm sure I will soon enough. Um, Iterin says, do you believe in real love slash soulmates? Why or why not? Yes and no. Maybe I'm cynical because I've been hurt a lot, but I believe everyone will fall out of love. <laughs> um, you know, I've been in love to the point where, you know, I believed it would never go away, and my partner believed it would never go away, but it did, and I've seen it happen. I mean, until I met that person, I also believed that love was never gonna be permanent. I never wanted to get married. I never believed in any of that shit because I had watched my, you know, mother and my biological father have such a shitty relationship and I swore I would never get married. 
But then I met someone that I believed was my soulmate and everything changed and I wanted to spend the rest of my life with him and we got married and all that good stuff and then it fell to shit. <laughs> um, so yeah, I do believe in real love. I do believe in soulmates, but I also believe that people can change. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, sometimes it might end in heartbreak. Sometimes it just might end in slowly both of you falling out of love and it'll be a mutual thing. So I don't know, yes and no. I do have hope for love, but at the same time, like, I mean, I'm not currently dating. I'm not currently wanting to date. I am currently focused on my life and my career. Like, I don't even have fucking time. I don't have time for relationship. For me, when I'm in a relationship, it's a relationship. It's real. You know, you spend time with each other and you do things with each other and you focus on each other. And when I love someone, I fucking love them a lot with my soul. And they become number one, which I don't want right now. Right now, I am number one. Right now, my career is number one. Right now, my music and my tattoos and my writing, that is my number one. Me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm happy where I am. I don't particularly give a fuck about finding someone. What sports have you tried in your life? I tried snowboarding. Not gonna do that again. Um, I tried basketball when I was younger and I did not make the team because I was like half the height of everybody else. Um, I think if I had grown up in Canada, I would be super into ice hockey. Or just hockey, it's just hockey here. But I didn't. So whatever. I'm not a sport person. How do you see yourself 15 years from now? What would you be doing and where would you live? I don't know. That's weird, that's scary, don't ask me that. Ashley says, what advice would you give to someone about, oh, bleh, bleh. What advice would you give to someone about to step into adulthood and moving out? How scary was it for you? It wasn't scary at all for me, but that's because I grew up moving from country to country. So I was used to it and I wanted to do it. For me as a kid, all I wanted to do was grow up. All I wanted to do was be an adult, have my own place, and just be my own person. So I don't know what it's like to not want to be an adult. I know a lot of people who are constantly saying that, you know, they wish they could be a kid again. You know, the best years of their life was when they were young. I know people when I was young that did not want to grow up. Um, I just don't know what that feels like. I always wanted to be grown up. I always wanted to be my own person. I wanted to be in control of my own life. I'm a control freak when it comes to myself. I cannot stand other people telling me what to do. Even as a kid, I couldn't stand it, which is why I wanted to be a grown-up, because I knew that grown-ups could do what they wanted to do. That, that is Bailey, Teddy. You don't have to freak out. Advice, don't be afraid. It's normal to be afraid. I'm just not normal. <laughs> pursue a career that you actually want to pursue. Don't waste your time on something because other people are telling you to do it. Don't waste your time on something because it's safe. Commit yourself to something that you truly want to do because even if it's a struggle, at least you'll be happy while you struggle because you'll know that you're working towards something that you want. You know, if you end up doing something you don't want to do and then you end up struggling doing that, you're just going to be a miserable piece of shit. You're going to be like, fuck everything. So yeah, do what you want to do. Um, be good with your money. Try to keep savings. Although this is coming from someone that has no savings. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Just don't be afraid. Maybe. Jesse says, what's your favorite snack? Vegetable, outfit, pair of shoes? Um, I don't know about you, but I don't eat shoes. What's your favorite snack? Um, usually if I'm at home and I need a snack, I end up just eating chocolate because I always have chocolate in my freezer and I go to my fridge and I stare into it and then I end up eating a chunk of chocolate. If I'm at work and I want a quick snack, I tend to get french fries. Um, favorite vegetable? As soon as I read favorite vegetable, my mind immediately said capsicum slash sweet pepper slash bell pepper, depending on where you're from. I've kind of been obsessed with those since I was a kid. 
There's a story behind that, I'm not gonna bother with that now. But, yeah. So considering that one leapt to mind, it's probably that one, I just haven't cooked with it in a while. So I'm gonna go to the grocery store and get some. Favorite outfit? I don't know, just comfy clothes, depends on what I feel like wearing. Favorite pair of shoes? That depends. It's now winter time, so I don't really have a favorite pair of shoes because I can only wear my snow boots because those are my only waterproof shoes that will actually survive rain Coover. Um, but I just, I wear these when I'm at home. Sometimes I bring them to the shop so I can change out of my snow boots. Um, in the summer, I wear bands all the time. My summer bands or my galaxy bands. Uh, favorite favorite current TV series Brooklyn Nine Nine and The Flash, hands down. I just watched season one of Supergirl because it was put on Netflix. That was very entertaining, but that Flash crossover episode was the best fucking shit. I laughed so hard multiple times in that episode. I fucking love The Flash, and it's not just because I was on it, but because I was on it, I'm just like I was on The Flash for like two seconds. Chloe says, why do people decide art is amazing and artists are so talented but they never want to pay us? Because people are shit. Also, will you adopt me? No. No. <laughs> okay, Autumn says, what is your current goal in life? I, everything that was already my goal in life. You know, just my music and my writing and stuff. Marketa Dvorsakova. Whoa! Marketa Dvorsakova. Cool name. Uh, do you have any advice on how to be confident in what you are doing and not give up when things don't work out? Um, confidence? Shit, dude. I wish I could magically be confident. That would definitely help with auditions. I'm really confident in some things that I do. I guess I built confidence like with music and stuff and songwriting. I'm super confident now just because I've been doing it for so long, but I used to be really insecure about it. And I would only do it in private and I wouldn't want anyone to see me do these things. I wouldn't want anybody to listen to me singing or playing guitar. But because I've done it so much on my own, now I'm comfortable, comfortable with myself, which means I'm okay with other people hearing it. Um, so I guess if you want to be confident in something, just do it a lot on your own, and then eventually you'll be cool with other people hearing it. God damn it, I just swept this morning and there's already shit everywhere. I'm not giving up when things don't work out. Well, you can either give up, or you can not give up. It's up to you whether or not you want to give up or not. If you're doing something and you honestly believe that it's a waste of your time, and that you should just stop, like me with snowboarding, just give up. Don't waste your time. But if you really love something, if you really love doing something, don't give up. I mean, if you really love it, you're not going to anyway. You might try to give up and then end up doing it anyway just because you love it. But if you really want to do something, don't give up. Colleen McFarland says, What's your relationship status right now? Single as fuck! Trinity's Wonderland says, What is your standpoint on legalizing weed? Fucking do it. Alcohol is worse than weed. Cigarettes are worse than weed. Weed cures cancer. Weed, ki well, it doesn't cure, but it, like it helps people with epilepsy and a whole bunch of other problems. Like weed is a magical plant, and people need to get the fuck over it. Well, no, they need to get the fuck over hating it, and they need to get the fuck on loving it. I don't smoke weed. It makes me crazy, but I acknowledge like. Weed is really fucking good for some people. If you don't personally like it, then don't personally smoke it. Lana Del Rey Birdie says, what's your favorite type of weather? No rain, clear skies, sun, or snow, but sun. Uh, do you ever want to own a house? Maybe one day, but I don't know. I love where I live. Nissan says, if you could, would you change everything you've been through to be somewhere different, or would you still choose to go through the same shit knowing where you'd end up now? Same shit. I wouldn't change anything. I would, I do wish my sister and I had treated our mother better growing up, 
because we were taught by our biological father to treat her like shit. Um, and we did, for a very long time, which I wish I could change that. But I also acknowledge biological father being a piece of shit and fucking all of us up is, like, I don't think I'd be here if that hadn't happened. So, I don't know. I tell her I love her every single day. I try to make up for it. Um, Gothic Atheist says, Would you rather be a mermaid or a pixie? Mermaid! Daniela Kenobi says, How do you deal with your anxiety? Mine is getting worse and worse every day, and I don't know what to do anymore. If you could give tips and advice, that would be great. Um, for me, if I have an anxiety attack or something, I like to deal with the actual problem. I like to deal with whatever it is that, you know, triggered the attack. Sometimes it's hard to figure out. Sometimes it's easy. Um, my main example for what happened, my last anxiety attack was triggered by getting a phone call from my landlord saying, Hey, one of your neighbors has been complaining about your dogs barking while you're gone all day. So then I started freaking out, thinking I was going to get evicted, and then I had an anxiety attack. And I was freaking out, and some people were telling me, like, why don't you talk to someone? And I'm like, you know what? Talking to someone isn't going to stop my dogs from barking. So, instead, I posted a status on Facebook saying, Hey, does anybody know anyone that might want to dog sit a couple days a week? Um, they don't have to do much. They can literally just sit at home and watch Netflix. As long as someone is here, the dogs will not be barking. Um, and then a couple of people responded, and then I sorted something out, and now I have a dog sitter, and I haven't had an anxiety attack since. But, <laughs> after I had that anxiety attack, before I fixed that problem, once the anxiety hits you, things that you haven't even thought about will come back and, like, fuck you up. I remember that night I had the anxiety attack, I had a dream about one of my exes who I hadn't even thought about in months. I had a dream that like he was dating my sister and treating her better than he had ever treated me and like flaunting it in my face and it was such a horrible stressful dream and I spent the entire dream trying to tell my sister that he was like a, psycholy a psychologically abusive shit and she wasn't believing me and the entire dream was awful and I woke up stressed out and it was fuck. When your anxiety hits you, it just does not leave you alone, and I know how that feels. And then I fixed the root problem of the dogs, and now I'm okay. So I would suggest trying to figure out what the root problem is. The dog one was easy to figure out, but I feel like if you've had the same life for a very long time, for example, back when I lived with biological father, which I had done so my entire life, you know, having anxiety attacks back then, I wouldn't have figured out it was because of him. Because that's all I knew. So it is kind of hard to figure some things out. Other things are easier. I would highly recommend reflecting on your entire life, even if it's hard. Figure out what things make you happy and what things make you sad or angry, try and sort out, like, even if you love someone, never underestimate how much you can love your abusers. If somebody makes you feel like shit, but they also make you feel good, put them in the they make you feel like shit folder, because chances are they're fucking with your anxiety. Um, even if they make you feel good sometimes, even if they make you feel good a lot of the times, one bad comment can fuck you up. Um, so try and figure out what is causing the anxiety. I'm very self-aware, so I feel like it is very easy for me to kind of figure out what is causing my anxiety. It's not as easy for some other people. So if it is hard, I would recommend talking to someone. To uh, talk to a professional. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but for some people it's the best thing too. There is no shame in that. Um, let's take Sebastian Stan as an example. He's an actor I like, that I was talking about earlier on in this video, and I know he's open about the fact that he has anxiety and has a therapist that he talks to quite often. You know, people you look up to, people you respect, 
deal with the same shit and I feel like more people need to talk about it. I'm very open about the fact that I do have anxiety and I do suffer from depression. You can hear it in my music for fuck's sake. Like, I'm a depressed bitch a lot of the time. Um, but my music is actually what helps me get through it. Sometimes I will write a song that I cannot play without crying, but in my process of playing it again and again and again and listening to it again and again and again while recording, by the time I'm like done with the song, I don't feel sad anymore because I'm working on the song and I'm working on the feelings so much that like it gets sorted out. So kind of working on music is kind of like having a therapist for me because you work on the th you work on the thing again and again and again until you're like done with it and you're like fuck I'm over this shit. <laughs> yeah, this person hurt me, but I'm sick of this shit. So, yeah, try and figure out what's causing the root problem. You know, you can try doing that on your own or you can try doing that while talking to someone. It's different for everyone. I'm not good at talking to people. Um, which is because I had no one to talk to growing up, which is another reason why I'm fucked up. But because of my upbringing, because of me becoming so used to dealing with everything on my own, which might not be good for some people, but that's how I do things now. I just deal with shit on my own and I'm okay. Um, sometimes I try to talk to people, but like, fuck, people never know what to say. But at the same time, I don't know what I would say to someone if they told me the things that I tell other people sometimes. Which is why I just don't tell people things. I just write music and cry. <laughs> um, but yeah, try and figure out what's causing the anxiety. Talk to someone. Um, whatever you do, don't hurt yourself. Don't harm yourself. Be safe. Emotional cake says, how ironic, did you ever think your YouTube would grow this big? Yes, I'm awesome. Love and Love 88 says, how do you feel about yourself? As in, how do you feel about your true self? If that makes sense. Thank you for being you. I wish I was stronger than I am. I feel like the spirit animal I want to be is a fearsome, like, protective bear that just, like, goes nuts at people if you fuck with me or my friends. But the spirit animal I am is probably, like, fucking meerkat that just, like, runs away a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, my friend Melina, as an example, she grew up with, like, a fierce fucking mother that took no shit and was constantly, like, giving other people shit for fucking with her. And because of that, Melina's, like, such a strong person. And I respect that so much. Like, I wish I could just go mental at people when I want to. But I have the tendency to just freeze because growing up, um, my sister and I were not allowed to talk about our feelings. We've actually discussed this. We have discussed how we are both fucked up from our biological father. But yeah, like, we weren't allowed to talk about feelings growing up. Like, if you were angry, if you were sad, if you were upset, you couldn't talk about it. You know, keep everything to yourself, don't say anything. So we are so used to just keeping everything inside, and we are so bad at confrontation. We both have it. If, let's say someone is upsetting us, let's, for example, say it's like a partner, someone we're dating. When we think about it on our own, or if we're talking with someone else about it, we have so many points as to why this person upsets us, what they do that makes them upset us, and like what they could do to stop doing these things that upset us. But then the moment the person themselves is like, hey, what's wrong? We freeze and we forget everything. It's fucking annoying and I hate it, but like literally, as soon as someone actually confronts me, I forget everything and I fucking hate it. So I have started to like write things down if I want to confront someone. I need to like have my bullet points ready to go because I'm gonna forget. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's... what was the question? How do I feel about myself? I love myself, but 
I wish I was stronger. Which is funny because a lot of people look up to me and think I'm really strong. I think it's because I'm very self-aware. I mean, I, I'm very open about the fact that I have anxiety and depression. Sometimes I cry myself to sleep. And people respect that because other people don't want to admit it. I see nothing wrong with admitting that you're not as strong as you'd like to be. Um, sick call to work says, how do you, what do you like most about yourself? Oh my god, so many of these questions. Um, uh, I don't know. What do you like most about your fans? I like that, I don't know, we're kind of friends. We're just like, cool. Um, I haven't had too many weird experiences with people being like, creepy and annoying. That's always fun. I like that my fans like me for my personality. That's one thing I like. You know, I'll, I can always tell who's a fan and who's like a fucking weirdo on Instagram or Facebook because I'll post a photo of myself. And let's take my boobs, for example. They are large, um, but because I see them every single day, it doesn't really occur to me that they are large. And I'll take like a selfie or something and there'll be a huge amount of cleavage in it and I won't notice because that's normal to me. I see it every day, I don't notice the cleavage. And I'll post that photo, and people will be like, oh, you look great, you look happy, you look healthy. Those are the comments from the fans. Or they'll be like, you know, somebody will make like a joke about the cleavage, but I can tell it's like a light-hearted a light fan comment. And then you just get the fucking creepers that are like, nice breasts. Or I'll get like, direct messages like, wow, you should show these off more. And I'm like, oh, who the fuck are you? And those aren't my fans. I can always tell they aren't actually my fans. My fans are cool. You guys are cool. <laughs> what is your favorite thing in life? Oh God, that varies. Everything I do is my favorite thing. What are some of your, okay, I've already answered that. Nitro, Nitro Benson 94 says, what is the coolest movie you've ever watched? There's a lot of cool movies I've watched. Um, I need to eat something. I'm going hypoglycemic. Okay, I am back. Oh, hi, baby. Come here. Come cuddle. Okay. Okay, coolest movie I've ever watched. Uh, I don't know. There's. I like a lot of movies. I like cool movies. I like superhero movies. I like. Um, I like big movies, fantasy movies. I'm mostly watching kind of TV series right now. <laughs> um, Marco Polo on Netflix. I really like that show. Um, Luke Cage was awesome. I really enjoyed, like, Daredevil, Jessica Jones. Uh, <laughs> The Flash, Supergirl. Um... I'm brain farting a little bit right now. Hello. Um, how do you stay so positive all the time? I don't. Sometimes I crab myself to sleep and I hate my life. Um, but mostly I stay positive just because I'm so driven and I want to get shit done. Yinamari says DC or Marvel? Um... I'd say the DC movie universe is dying a little bit, but I am super excited for Wonder Woman. That movie looks like it's gonna be awesome. Uh, Justice League, because of Aquaman and Wonder Woman. I'm super excited to see Aquaman for Jason Momoa and Amber Heard. That's gonna be awesome. But of course, Marvel is generally winning. Although, you know, DC does have The Flash. Um, I fucking love Grant Gustin as The Flash, so we'll see how the movie goes. Um... Crotellus Basilicus. <laughs> how do you think- what do you think about the truth? Absolute or only interpretations? I haven't eaten enough to go into questions like that. Um, what is the truth? Who fucking knows what the truth is? As long as you're not hurting anyone, who gives a shit? Um, Ayushi says, what were your teenage years like? 
generally absolute crap because I was undiagnosed and an actual crazy person. And I wanted to die a lot and I cried a lot and my life was shit a lot. And now I'm better. How did it feel to live in different places all your life? Um, I'm grateful for the upbringing I had. I was very privileged. I acknowledge I was very privileged. Um, but also moving around so much as a child definitely kind of fucked me up. I think my sister and I are kind of a little bit fucked up from that. But at the same time, I don't think we'd change it. I wouldn't at least. Um, it's, it's hard as a kid moving so much. You never really get a sense of home. I still don't really have a sense of home. For me right now, I feel like Vancouver is home. I feel like I finally found a home. I feel like my sister still hasn't found one. She's been in Singapore for like over 10 years. Um, I know she wants to move. Um, so yeah, like never having a home, never having a sense of freedom, really. Because if you grow up in one place, you learn that place. You become a part of that place. That place becomes your home and you become comfortable in going out into that world and exploring that world, you know? You can do whatever the fuck you want in that world. We moved around so often we never had that. We never got comfortable enough to do any of that. Everything we did was dictated by our parents. Biological father, because he was in control. He had all the money, you know? We always had the sense of we are only here because he's paying for it. You know, we can only do the things that he lets us do. And we moved around so often, we lived in this bubble that was created for us. So we never had this sense of freedom, which is why I was so miserable as a child, because I cannot stand being controlled. Um, yeah. So it was good, but it was bad. I mean, we are very well-traveled. We are definitely world children. We are not from one place. We kind of consider ourselves from multiple places and we know a lot about the world. We know a lot about different cultures and I feel like that makes us more respectful towards other cultures. Um, but at the same time, it kind of fucks you up as a kid. <laughs> All right, now we are at the questions about pets. And this is the last bunch of questions, isn't it, Bailey? No. You're being so cute down there. Christine says, how are your doggies doing? How are you guys doing? How are you doing? You doing good? I think Bailey's doing good. Bailey? You doing good? Teddy? What about you? Come here, Ted. Teddy's watching us from the ground. <gasps> oh, hi, Bailey. Well, Teddy was in the videos earlier. They're doing good. They're happy little puppers. Although Bailey fucking hates the winter. She will not go outside unless she has to go to the bathroom or unless I whip out the chuck it and then she knows we're going to play fetch. Yes! Yes! Isn't that right? <coughs> Mirabelle says, would you ever get a pet snake? What would you name it? I would not because I would not be able to feed it mice or rats or that would make me sad. E Eaterine says, do you like reptiles? Yes, but mostly you have to feed them live things, and I would not be able to do that. Gina says, I love your puppies. I have three doggies as well, and I was wondering if you ever cook for them. If so, what are some of the things you love to make for them? Mostly I just give them some of what I am currently eating. Like this morning, we all had pancakes. Um, mostly I make a plate of stuff for myself, but I always cook with my eyes and not with my stomach, and I always end up with too much, or I end up with the perfect amount, because these guys get some. Isn't that right, Bailey? This morning, we had pancakes and vegan frankfurters. Frank... Fra yeah. Yes? Are you happy? What are you doing? Yeah, I think I'm going to start making cookies and stuff. Going to be getting on that gingerbread train. And so... But you guys can eat nutmeg. I know that. So, basically anything I eat that they can eat, I give them. Um, obviously if I make things that has like garlic in it, um, that's a no-no. And like avocado, that upsets puppy stomachs. Isabel says, would you get another dog or any other pets? I would, but not at the moment. Because I don't think I could take care of more than you guys at the moment. 
Isn't that right? I miss rats. I always want to get rats. I love rats. I spend a lot of my free time at work on the SPCA page looking at rats. But I want to concentrate all my puppy time, all my fur baby time on you and you guys. You know, I don't think I'm ready for other pets. I want to be responsible. I don't want to neglect anyone. Yeah, I miss Trinket. But I know she's happy. Sue Maybu says, favorite memories that you've had with your dog since you came to Canada? Um, I love taking them places whenever I took them to the beach. Played fetch in the water. Um, I'm really looking forward to taking them up to Whistler this winter so that they can see snow. You can see snow for the first time? You're gonna lose your shit! And then you're gonna get cold and you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna go inside. I'm gonna have to get you an extra coat. Little boots, you're gonna hate wearing boots. I think Teddy's gonna fucking love the snow. Teddy loves the winter. He gets so cuddly in the winter because he can't cuddle in any other season because he overheats. But Bailey, you hate the winter. You hate being cold. You're like me. But I kind of like the winter. I like seasons. Yeah, I love you. I love you. Such a sweetie. And that's all the questions. Woo! Look at this lighting change. Holy crap, the sun just came out. That's rare. Yeah, hope you guys like this video. Um, thank you, 120,000 subscribers. I feel like you can tell my energy levels have changed. I went hypoglycemic and then I ate, like, chocolate. And now I feel weird. Um, I should eat a proper meal. Until next time, adios, motherfuckers. Ooh, God, there's a lot of fur in my face. You want to go for a walk?